seems like Shaheen Brown the last, you know, couple of weeks especially has come on. He had a couple of good plays, against, um, few good plays against um, Syracuse, and last week had a few, a couple more plays. What's he doing well, and like, you know, what's his energy like now that he's performing like this? Yeah, he's been having success. It was great to see him get the interception, um, but. You know, I've seen this coming with him, uh, continue to challenge him, coach him, uh, put him in good situations, and you know, this has been a long investment for him and for us. It's good to see it pay off. Uh, he's one of our better players, and I think he'll continue to get better. Coach, the last few weeks we've talked to the players post game. They talk about the second half adjustments, and they just say, we sit around and say no more points, and then there's no more points on the board. Is it really that easy? The guys just lock in, or what has been the key to you know zero points in the second half the last three games? Yeah, we, we make sure we say no points all the time. Um, it's good that that's happened more than it hasn't. Um, you know, it's just, you know, even when you go in a game playing like for weeks like this, you know, there's, when you get in this point in the season, you know, there's no really wholesale changes, right? But the small adjustments, the small understandings, like, you know, whether it's going into a game, whether it's series by series, uh, it all matters, um, you know. But I think we do have a veteran group. When you have a veteran group, usually the things that you say or the things that they see, um, you know, those reps mount up quicker. And so the adjustments or their reactions and all things, usually it's expedited in your ability to solve, um, you know, not problems, but just solve, create answers or, you know, better anticipation. And so, um, you know, we've got a good group of players. We've got a smart group of players. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's a group that when you communicate with them, usually there's, there's a really good approach to that. Similar to Duke, Wake is one of the least penalized teams in the country, um, least penalty yards as well in the country in the top ten. Um, you know, does it help in the discipline sense that you are kind of seeing that in back-to-back -back weeks, you know, kind of a you know a team that doesn't really you know give up a lot of penalties? Yeah, I mean, we don't really have anything to do with that, you know, for our opponents, you know, and I think what it tells you is you got two well-coached teams, you know, Dave Clawson's been successful everywhere he's been. Uh, he's taken Wake, you know, a really consistent level. And um, I think he's one of the better coaches in the country. And um, I think how do you, you measure that? You know, penalties are one way to measure it. And, um, you know, so he's really good. He's done a great job there. Uh, obviously, a lot of good things on defense in that game. Uh, the place where they got the edge in the running game, is that multiple mistakes? Is it? So they could hit the right play call at the right time, or what was going on? There? Yeah, it's never the right play call at the right time because there's never a play where the edge of the defense isn't important to us. Um, you know, there's really, you know, you know, there was the, the biggest run of the day was just a big space crack replace, and, you know, I thought we had the edge set without the corner as well, but, you know, we just we couldn't get there. The ball bounced. We tried to go make the play, and, you know, our guy got kind of tangled up on a block and pulled back and whatever it was, but we got to go make the tackle too. Um, you know, a couple of the other ones, you know, because when you're trying to set edges, you don't just want to run up the field and create a bunch of space because now you have the edge set, but there's a bunch of space inside for the next player to make a play. So you're always trying to set hard edges and, and firm edges. And you know, our job is to take away all that space, and you can do that from outside in and, you know, but then when you get decent backs and they bounce the football, you usually try to expand. And, you know, sometimes the guy's a little bit quicker than you expected. You know, sometimes they're trying to block you and you're trying to get off. And, you know, so those things happen. Um, but definitely something we emphasize. And, you know, I would say there's probably about 80 yards of offense on just some bounce plays, you know. And so that's something we got to eliminate. Could be wrong, but I feel like defensive end is the, one of the positions where you rotate two at a time. It's two guys. Verse plays with Peyton. Turner plays with Edmund. Um, I don't know if that's been going on the whole season. I think most of it. Is that always the case with defensive ends with you? Could you do like Verse and Edmund and Peyton and Turner, or do you like those two guys rolling out there together? It's really good observation for you, Corey, because it's really happened a little bit more the last two weeks. It's not totally by design. Um, you know, obviously, Pat and Jared played the majority of the snaps. 
Um, you try to roll, you know, Byron's got a certain play count we're trying to hit with. Gilbert has a certain play count we're trying to hit with. And really, it's meant early in the game to sub it in a four-way role where it's usually not just Gilbert, Byron, or Jared and Pat. Usually it's more of a mixture of the two. But as the game gets going, and if we're playing pretty good and early down, you're trying to keep Jared and Pat fresh on third down too. You know, so that's how that plays out sometimes. Um, you know, it's – it's not by design going into the game, but based on rep counts and how the game's flowing, at times Jared and Pat will rest together. You're just trying to get them ready for third down, too. Yep. I'm guessing that the rotation part is probably part of the answer to this, but um, what you guys do, have done the second halves so these last four weeks, particularly, um, how much of that is the guys seeing what happened in the first half and understanding what you guys want to do differently in the second half, or how much of it is the rotation, or why do you think you guys have been so good? This yeah, I think it's both. You know, I I think we played 21 players, significant snaps. When I say that, I'm going to say the 21st player was probably at like 15 or 16 reps. And so, you know, that's three or four series. You know, I think, you know, Conrad, Omar were right there at the bottom of that 21 group of – but that's significant snaps in my eye. So when you're playing that many players, you're bound to be fresh. And so when's that going to show up? It's going to show up – late in the game it's going to show up late in the season and you know so I think that has something to do with it um, you know but I do think we have smart players and you know just as the game goes on you know I think it's in, those, those things start to pick up a little bit more you know and before the season you had said that Braden Fisk is someone you were excited for the fan base to see in action the amount of energy that he's played with especially this past week I guess it's been pretty consistent for the impact he's making from just energy standpoint, I guess, what has that meant to you guys on defense? Yeah, I'm really glad you, you notice it. And, you know, because when you are rotating guys, when you are having impact, and, you know, the last couple of weeks, third downs, we've been really good, but they're not typical third downs. You're still getting a lot of run game and quick game passes. And so maybe some of the impactful stats that, you know, the outside world just judge people on of sacks and, and hurries, uh, but Braden shows up in so many ways, you know, um, just he's working his tail off on how he's playing. He's loved by his teammates um, because they, they just see him on, on Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays and the work he puts in. And then that stuff shows up on Saturday. And um, he's been a force for us. You know, he's somebody we rely on. Um, we're trying to keep him on the field as much as we can, but keep him fresh at the same time and get that balance with Braden. But, you know, we had – you know, we've got packages with him at defensive end, you know, that we probably haven't used that much, but we're ready for that. We've got things to try to get him centered up in one-on-ones. And, you know, I, I'm just, I think the world of him because of how he goes about his business and the smile he has on his face, um, plus he's big and fast. When Coach Norvell is so aggressive on fourth down, does that give the defense confidence knowing how much the coaching staff trusts them? Um, you know, we trust Mike and whatever they do, and then we go and react. You know, there's a lot of times those things work. You know, we get first downs, we go down and score. When we don't, then it's our turn. I mean, that's how you look at it. Um, you know, there's times that, you know, we need them to pick us up. There's times that they need us to pick them up. Sometimes that – our kickoff return team needs to pick up the team. And that's just part of being on a team. Um, anytime your team's lopsided on one side of the ball or lacks a phase, you know, that's going to show up in big games. But when you're really balanced and you're good in, in a bunch of different ways, situationally, uh, on both sides of the ball, that's how you wear down teams. You know, and that's how what happened in the Duke game happens. You, know, you get a bunch of stops in a row. You start creating some big plays on offense. You take a, a kick return back. I think that does come back down with how we use our guys in the special teams too, because they're interwoven. You know, you look out there and you got Kevin Knowles um, playing next to LT on punt pressure. You know, you're punting the football. You know, and you see Jakai Douglas covering a punt next to Rosario. I mean, that's just the best of our team, and I think that helps interwind the belief in our guys. And whether that comes to going for it on fourth down or needing stops in two minutes. Yeah, I think it's just good and indicative on what this team is. With Wake, how different are they if it's Griffiths versus somebody else, and what does Griffiths do well at quarterback for them? 
yeah, I don't think it was by plan they've played so many quarterbacks. You know, I think, you know, they've, they've run into some, some turnovers. They've run into some injuries. Um, you know, I think what's helped them is even though they've had to play a couple more people behind the center that they've wanted, they've been so consistent in their scheme and their execution throughout years that, you know, they can go back and, you know, they've had a lot of success at quarterback at Wake through Dave's, um, Coach Clawson's time there at Wake. And, um, you know, I think they went in the season, you know, with Griffiths as, you know, the quarterback that was the heir apparent. Um, you know, they've run in a, a few issues with, you know, I know he's been banged up and has turned the ball over a few more times than they've wanted. Um, you know, but, you know, they've got a good staff over there. I'm sure they're working to get it figured out. And, um, you know, I think that offense has had a long history of success. So, you know, it, it, brings, it brings its unique challenges. Holding is going to happen. Um, uh, I know there was a uh, well, former defensive coordinator here who you know well uh, who used to say holding is a personal problem to the defensive players when they complained about it. Well, what do you tell guys, and, and how do you evaluate plays when that happens? Yeah, I mean, our job is to get off blocks and make tackles, you know, regardless of the technique. And uh, I know this, if you're comfortable being held, you're never going to get it called. And so... It's just about trying to create block destruction, you know, get back off of blocks and go make a play. And, you know, I try not to even address it. You know, I mean, Mike deals with the officials um, and, you know, I try to deal with the players and just, you know, we just got to get off. And that's part of it. And, you know, there are things out there that get called. There's things that aren't. And you just keep it moving and make sure the technique and the effort is what you're coaching. It is, it is the, it's a bonus question for you. It is the second week in a row you're not quite sure who the starting quarterback is going to be. Um, but does their offense change from one quarterback to another? I know you were addressing that a little bit. And did Dukes change much? Because it's not like he lit you up with his arm. Um, so what really changed when uh, Beeline came into the game? And do you foresee anything changing depending on who these weight quarterbacks are? Are they, they have a similar skill set, I guess. Yeah. Um, you want me to do the Duke one? Sure. Okay. Yes. So bonus, bonus. I'm on you. But there, it's it's great questions. Um, you know, as far as do, you could just see the confidence. I mean, they allowed Riley probably a little bit more at the line of scrimmage. You know, and when you know the the younger quarterback came in, I mean, they were trying to protect him. You know, I know the fourth and three play call was just what they thought needed to be done, uh, but you know, it was a little bit different. You know, um, the style of the offense is still the same. I mean, the formations, it's not wildcat. You know, when people sub that guy in, that's what's going to happen. Um, there are strengths and weaknesses to each player. I think a play caller's job is to get that player comfortable. Uh, but you don't want the other 10 to have to change. You know, with Wake, you know, they, uh, you know, it's the same offense, but you could see, obviously, in the past, they've had some quarterbacks that just operated just such a – they were always ahead of what was going to happen because whether it was the, the skill level or the talent of that person or it was just, you know, how comfortable they felt. You know, I think as Wake moves forward and, you know, they've had a couple people behind the center, the good thing for them is all these guys have been in the same system. You know, I wouldn't say the offense changes much, um, but, you know, there were even that last pick game where they had a different starter. You know, you saw a little bit more called design runs probably just a – get the quarterback comfortable. I think you, you will see some, some maybe some schematic changes that aren't full sale changes, but maybe something that takes things off the plate of the quarterback to get him comfortable, whatever that is, screen pass, called runs, call quick game, something that builds confidence. Thanks, guys. See you all.